Welcome to People to People. I'm your host, Micah Mater. Let's get started. Dr. George Frazier is one of the most sought after speakers in the world when it comes to the art of networking. He says adopting some intentional habits when planning for your future will make all the difference. He has a conference coming up where the best in the business will share the secrets of networking success, but we have him here today to share some of his secrets. Dr. Frazier, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. And it's uh... It's just good to be with you. Oh, it's I appreciate a, it. Thank you know, you. in this time when we're going through the pandemic and the violence and things like that, it's good to have a, a sage talk to us a little bit about how to network and how to get out of the bottom and come to the top, which is actually one of your, your favorite phrases, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, no question about it. I think uh, let's establish the reason why networking is so important. Um, you cannot get out of life alone. I mean, you, you know, our whole life is about interacting and uh, connecting with people. I mean, there is no success that you can attain, sustain, or maintain on your own by yourself in a vacuum. In fact, you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. In fact, the fastest way to change yourself, of course, <clears throat> is to hang out with people who are already like you. we. Uh, yeah, yeah, who are already where you want to be. Right. The point here is don't spend major time with minor people. People going nowhere want you to go nowhere with them. People doing nothing want you to do nothing with them. If you want to change your life, change your relationships. In fact, if you are not where you want to be in life, it's because you don't have the right people in your life. So you have to spend time cultivating, nurturing, and developing relationships at work, at home, and in the community. This is biblical. This is not something Dr. Fraser made up. There's a beautiful passage in the Bible, John 5, 30, a direct quote from Jesus Christ. There are 800,000 words in the Bible. Only 1,500 words are from Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, and Jesus said, I of my own self can do nothing. Now, this is the Son of God. He couldn't get it done on his own by himself in a vacuum. He needed at least 12 disciples and one turned on them. So relationships are critically important, but we make critical mistakes, especially people of color. I'm an African-American male and have been for the past 76 years, <laughs> so I've been back a long time. And, uh, and uh, I've written about this. I've spoken 2,500 times about this. I've written six best-selling books on it. I even wrote a children's book called Who Would Have Thunk It? The First Adventure of the Fraser Foster Kids, because my background was nothing to... Um, to, uh, to, to, to speak about, really. I mean, I, I grew up uh, in, in, in orphanages and foster care. My mother became mentally ill uh, when I was two years old, put into, put into orphanages from two to five, and then aged out of toxic foster homes. And then when I went back to my home in Bed-Stuy in Brooklyn, New York, uh, my uh, three older brothers had gotten there before me, and they were heroin addicts. One was serving time on Rikers Island for heroin, and ultimately my youngest brother, Joseph, was killed in a drug deal that went bad. No one thought I was college material, so I went to a vocational high school, got a diploma in carpentry, couldn't get a diploma, couldn't get work in carpentry in New York because the Italians controlled the union at that time. So um, I ended up mopping floors on the midnight shift at LaGuardia Airport. It was the my start in life. I met some incredible people, spit shining toilets and urinals. In fact, my first job, not mopping floors, although I did it with excellence. If you were to go to LaGuardia Airport today, Micah, and go down into the maintenance department. There's a picture on the wall. It's a picture of me. I was oh. the best flopper in the history of LaGuardia Airport. What's the point? It's not how you start. It's how you finish, right? And whatever you're going to do, do it with excellence, right? How you do anything is how you do everything. So this is, um, these were the beginning lessons that I learned and then understanding very quickly that if, if it were not for people, the right people, and um, not, uh, you know, having a good uh, attitude about the things that I did, regardless of what I did, and doing it with excellence, that you and I would not be having this conversation. Whew. Thank you, Dr. Fraser. <laughs> you have told a lot in just the last two, two minutes. But let me ask you right. this. You talked about your brothers. They <laughs> did not succeed as you did. How can some succeed and some don't? Uh, that's a deep question, and we don't have enough time to unpack that. A lot of it is your environment. A lot of it is the people, your, your circle of friends. Um, that's 
critically important. Uh, it's a lot of it uh, is understanding that the businesses that we're in, the, the world that we live in, and I say it all the time, the most powerful asset that you will have in the 21st century will not be your computer, it will be your relationships. If in fact you're engaged in business, whether it's your own business or some place that you're working, understand that business is about relationships. Without relationships, you have no business. Without relationships, you have no business being in business. In fact, the business Business you're really in is the business of building relationships. That's the business you're really in. And so you have to have um, uh, a network of people that will guide you in that way. Why? Because there's a system for everything. Mm -hmm. Everything is a system. Ray Kroc built a system to make a freaking hamburger. Right. So you have to have a system, just like you have to have a system for effective networking. You have to bless and release toxic people that come into your life. Now, this is very easy to say, very difficult to do. Why? Yes. Because most of these people are your family, your family. Exactly. I had to bless and release my brothers when I went back uh, to the home my father maintained uh, when I aged out of foster care. Um, they were heroin addicts. Mm -hmm. uh, so I said to myself, I had to get out of there. Right. So I waited uh, about 18 months, got myself together, packed up what little I had, got on a Greyhound bus and I moved to Cleveland, Ohio and got a job working in the, uh, uh, the Cleveland Clinic laundry room where I made wonderful friends. And from those friends, I got a job working in, with Encyclopedia Britannica. One thing led to another. And that's the story of my life. And then, you know, 19, I mean, sorry, 2016. What did I get? I received the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award from President Barack Hussein Obama. So it is you make these decisions, and you ha and you are responsible for these decisions, and you're responsible for working on cultivating, nurturing, and building the three most important networks that you will need for your entire life. We get about eight passages in life. Each passage is about 10 years because we're constantly changing and evolving. You're a different person at 10 than you were at 1. You're a different person at 20 than you were at 10. You're a different person, let us pray. You're a different person at 30 than 20. So we're constantly evolving. People are platooning in and out of our lives. So you a personal network, right? These are the people that lift you up, cheer you on, hug you, right? These are the people that love you. Let's call that your network at home, but you have to be very careful about that mm -hmm. because, you know, if your stuff isn't right at home, it's probably not going to be right other places. The second network you need is an operational network. These are the people that come in and out of your life. These are the people that help you to get specific tasks done, whether it's the place of business you're working, whether it's your own business, whether you're, on, you're a deacon or a deaconess on a church board. These are people that you help them to get tasks done. They help you to get tasks on. This is your operational network. And so you need to find the right collection of people uh, for your operational network. Um, then the final network, and this is the key, is your strategic network. These are the people that are smarter than you. These are the people that will drag you into the 21st century kicking, screaming, and crying. These are the people that are where you want to be in life. These are the people that will ultimately be your mentors and coaches. In fact, if you are the smartest person in your network, you're in the wrong darn network, right? You don't ever want to be the smartest person in your network, but because how are you going to grow? Who's going to lift, reach down and lift up and reach back and pull forward? So selecting your friends is probably the most critical humanistic task that you will have in your life. It is easy to screw that up. Um, there's much evidence of people who were decent human beings brought the wrong people in their life, were influenced by those people, and they end up where those where those bad people are. So it is a, this is very again very easy to say, very difficult to do. You have to be very 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 selective. You know, I said I tell sisters all the time because the most important decision that you will make as a human being will be your significant other, your partner. And I warn them all the time: if you can't build with them, don't chill with them. Right? It ain't supposed to be free, right? And 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 you make them work for it, right? You 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 and you have to figure this out. That's the single most important human decision you will make is your life partner. The second biggest decision you will make, if it, if you're in business, is your business partner. I've been married 47 years to the same sister. I made a really good decision. She made sure 
that I did not hang out with crazy people because she wanted to meet them and she had an opinion about them. And if her opinion, uh, her intuition was not good, I probably blessed them and released them, right? So you have to have this in your life it, and, and, and you have to seek it and you have to you have to engage it. You have to listen to the people in your life if, in fact, they're giving you good advice. If not, bless them and release them. And as I said, this is easy to say, difficult to do, because most toxic, the most toxic people you will have in your life uh, are your family members. And so this is very difficult to bless and release your blood but you have to make hard decisions. When I left Brooklyn, New York to move to Cleveland, Ohio, I had never been out of New York in my damn life, right? I moved to Cleveland, Ohio, where I had an older sister, right, who took me in. It was the most difficult thing I did to go to a new environment with new people, no one that I ever knew, other than my sister who was there. So these are huge decisions that you will make through every passage to every step of your life, your personal network, your operational network, and your strategic network. And that's how you have to think about it. And then you have to avoid the big mistakes when you network, because we make huge mistakes. We don't follow up, right? I've given out 31,000 business cards in 40 years. People used to say, Dr. Fraser, aren't you concerned uh, that people are going to bug the hell out of you by giving them your, giving them your number? No. Here's what I've learned. 99.9999% of people will never, ever follow up. And this is specific and very, very uh, an egregious statistic when it comes to our own people. We will not follow up. The fortune is in the follow up. The second biggest mistake, or actually it's the sixth biggest mistake, the seventh was uh, not following up. The sixth is we make a poor first impression. People are not interested in your life story. When they meet you, they just want to know just enough about you uh, so that they will want to know more about you at a later time. So you really have to think about when you meet people for the first time, what are you going to say to them? You only had about 15 seconds to engage them and get their attention. You have to pique so you their really interest. To think about the script. Yeah, yeah. So uh, would you like for me to give you my uh, self-introduction? It's very, it takes 17 seconds. Here okay, it is. if you could do it in 17 seconds. Yeah, hi, I'm Dr. George Fraser from Cleveland, Ohio, by way of Brooklyn, New York. I'm the CEO and founder of FraserNet Incorporated. I write books on economic development and building effective relationships. I help people turn, turn acquaintances into friends and contacts into contracts. And over the last 40 years, I've helped over 5,000 people secure $1.5 billion in new business. Good to meet you. That's 71 words in about 17 seconds. You're amazing. That's my life. You're amazing. Can I take you home with me? Now, people. Yes, learn absolutely. more, <laughs> Dr. George I was Fraser. going to propose to you. I was going to propose. I was going to say, would you marry me? But I'm already married. Yeah, me too. <laughs> 27 years on my end. All right. Thank you, Dr. George Fraser. Be safe, be well. The Power Networking Global Virtual Conference takes place August 11th through the 14th. You can find more details and register at powernetworkingconference.com. And after that, you need to check in to that Power Network because you can learn a whole lot. I just did.